Karen uh, Kasumasa of the Japan Economic Foundation and the, uh, all the uh, officers and uh, uh, organizers from the Philippine uh, from PIDs. I'd like to make my closing remarks really uh, like a kiss to all of you to keep it short and sweet. But I really hesitate. I wanted to answer so many of the questions that were propounded earlier. But uh, I think uh, I will just invite you to come to my office so we can have coffee because I think in this uh, brief uh, moment, uh, we all want to, uh, to uh, it has been a long day. But just to briefly uh, say that on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs, especially my office, I'm really uh, very glad that uh, we are invited to this uh, forum. Three things that we learned today, that when we want to look for integration and inclusiveness in a digital society, one is we must be watchful and mindful of the influence of populism and its implications to free trade, multilateralism, economic growth, and the promotion of the social economic being of ordinary citizens. Second is to really take seriously the role and impact of innovation so that everybody benefits positively and not uh, to further alienate or widen the digital, uh, digital gap um, among uh, nations. Our presenters actually help us navigate the environment of uh, innovation, the future that awaits us. We had some very useful proposals on how to make a safe landing using and making innovation as a propeller of sustainable and inclusive growth and development. Examples of this is really a conscious effort to look at education, for instance, and adjusting some regulatory frameworks. These are uh, areas that could be considered when looking at innovation. And the third one, which is really close to the hearts of uh, this question about the top-down and the uh, bottom-up approach, on the principle of uh, people-centered and people-oriented ASEAN. We had a long debate defining what is people-centered and what is people-oriented. And if I will repeat the debate here, we will stay here until midnight. Because right now, even among us in ASEAN, there are those who'd like to focus on people-centeredness and others would like to focus on people-oriented uh, initiatives. But where do we go from here? So, as an Assistant Secretary for ASEAN and one that sits in these meetings, for instance, in the chairmanship of the Philippines, we hosted 282 meetings. And one of our panelists said, that's too much meetings, I agree. But why did it take us so long, in the last 50 years of ASEAN, that we seem to have isolated the ordinary or the grassroots? It's because I'd like to think that for the first 50 years of ASEAN, the focus was on the vertical approach. What do I mean by that? The leaders and governments were focused on developing institutions in ASEAN so that when the right time comes, when issues and concerns, there is always a platform to go to. Now the time has come that it's time to go horizontal. Why? Because I think the ASEAN governments and the leaders do recognize that these issues, especially the Brexit issue, has enlightened many of our leaders in ASEAN. And we think that we are on the right track because I think that we will never have a Brexit in ASEAN. Because from the very beginning, it's more about relationships, it's more about cooperation, and it's more about listening to what needs to be done. Of course, there is a big gap between implementation and the actual programs which the leaders thought would be uh, necessary for the 620 million citizens of ASEAN. But having said that, 
who would believe that after 50 years, all 10 countries will have their own National Human Rights Commission? It's not perfect. But these countries now have their individual National Human Rights Commission. Who would think that despite the issues of the 70s and the 80s of having the problems of Vietnam and Cambodia, all 10 member states, or even the problems preceding the, um, the establishment of ASEAN in 1967, we will have now all these 10 countries living in peace. The peace dividend is something that we in ASEAN is very proud of, and that's the reason that um, between EU and ASEAN, more and more countries are embracing ASEAN by applying to accede to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia. So we'd like to think that there is no alternative to dialogue. And so my message here is that we may have some challenges for ASEAN. Number one is uh, balancing national interest with regional interest, regional aspiration, the national law versus a regional aspiration. We've, had, uh, we've heard some questions about, for instance, how do we implement agreements in ASEAN to expedite trade facilitation, investment? So this is really a challenge, but I think that many of our member states, including um, uh, our distinguished uh, uh, permanent secretary from the, the, the trade ministry of, uh, of uh, Malaysia, would really also agree that there is no alternative to a free trade. And this is exactly why the Philippines has taken on a theme of partnering for change and engaging the world because we continue and we will maintain to be an outward looking region. The second one is the need to increase ASEAN awareness and its international led mechanisms. We've heard about the ARF, the ASEAN plus three, and maybe it's also time for me to uh, mention that part of the success of an East Asian economic community is not just ASEAN alone but the strong and robust relations among the important plus three countries of China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea. Of course, these are challenging times for many of uh, the countries in East Asia, but I think that uh, we still have that strategic dialogue-led mechanism called the East Asia Summit, where we're very grateful that President Trump finally decided to, to come over and be part of that strategic dialogue. And of course, the third one is more of a uh, technical but a very influential uh, um, development if we will be successful. And this is, of course, strengthening the ASEAN Secretariat. We all know that many of the resources, the reason why we are being propelled to many of the projects and activities is because of the support of our dialogue partners. But we also want to be self-reliant. We want to increase more resources, but the only way to do that is, of course, to have a deeper sense of integration. So as the president would say, in the last 50 years, we had consensus, we had cooperation, consensus, and collaboration. For the, next three year, for the next 50 years, and at least to realize the vision of a rules-based, people-centered, and people-oriented ASEAN for year 2025, we will make a proactive measure to improve on our community building, on our centrality, and connectivity. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, organizing this forum, and as I said, um, I'd really like to have the privilege of uh, having some even uh, bilateral or multilateral uh, discussions with the eminent panelists because certainly all your inputs are very uh, useful. Thank you.